A weaker pound helps the FTSE 100 hit a record high. Welcome to Market Insight. I'm Ramsan Karamali. The UK's blue chip index surpassed its previous high of 8,047 that it hit last February today, with sterling faltering and some positive corporate updates. Also, the latest PMI data, not just for the UK, but also the Eurozone, seem to point in a more optimistic direction. Well, to help unpack all of that and more, I'm joined by Jeremy Stretch, head of G10 FX Strategy at CIBC. Jeremy, thanks so much for joining us. Well, the FTSE finally followed some of its peers and hit a record high. So how much is that down to the currency and how much is it down to those corporate earnings? Well, as ever, there is no one single individual factor which is uh, driving the uptick in the FTSE. I think clearly the uh, cheapening up in the valuation of sterling over the course of the last couple of months. Uh, so we have seen sterling dropping by around two, two and a quarter percent has helped to provide impetus for those uh, dollar revenue earners. And at the same time, the upbeat corporate earnings have also encouraged the market to uh, surpass those previous record peaks. Now, we know that sterling's trading near those five month lows. Is this all down to rate cut expectations by the Bank of England? Well, it's certainly part of that. We have seen a significant and substantial uh, sort of uh, degree of volatility in rate cut expectations uh, over the course of the last uh, week or two, and including even today when we've seen, uh, as obviously, as you've mentioned, those uh, service PMI numbers in the UK proving to be pretty constructive, uh, implying a stronger pace of growth. But of course, so also the subtext of that resilience in terms of the service sector is the potential for resilient prices in that service sector. And that probably will stay the hand of uh, the Bank of England slightly. So I think there are some uh, obvious uh, volatility factors behind the interest rate dynamics. Uh, but ultimately, we have seen uh, the change in uh, uh, policy perspective having an impact on sterling valuations over the course of the last month or two. And just quickly, what are your expectations for a rate cut in the UK? Are you sticking with uh, late summer or like most people or you, have you got a different view? Well, I was originally looking for an August uh, cut for the first one from the Bank of England, but I did adjust that uh, last month to considering an earlier move uh, as, uh, as early as the June meeting. Uh, we had seen the market trying to price in a little more expectation for even as early as the next meeting in May uh, prior to uh, today's data. Uh, but I think uh, June, I think, still makes some sense. But I think the key influence between now and June will be what's happening on the wages side. So we will be watching the wages data with particular uh, laser-like focus and also seeing whether this resilience in the service sector does maintain uh, price uh, dynamics, which are uh, not commensurate with uh, the current inflation target. But for now, we're going to stick with the uh, June start to uh, policy easing from the Bank of England. Well, another factor that probably doesn't help the pound was today's borrowing figures. Uh, what did you make of them? They came in higher than expected. Yes, that's right. And it's quite interesting that obviously there was a fairly substantial miss compared to the numbers estimated by the OBR back at the uh, recent budget. So uh, more than a six billion uh, pound miss does underline the fact that uh, the UK Treasury doesn't have the degree of fiscal headroom or certainly the fiscal headroom that the Chancellor might have hoped in order to facilitate another fiscal event before the calling of the election. So clearly the uh, fiscal backdrop is not quite as uh, supportive. Uh, we're seeing increased levels of spending, and obviously the uh, borrowing costs are going up with higher gilt yields. So it's uh, not good news for the Chancellor. And of course, that just underlines the risk that if the government were to try and push through uh, further uh, fiscal expansion, then that could come at the expense of higher borrowing. And that's not particularly well regarded or well rewarded uh, by markets, as we well know from the trust experiment. Well, the euro today hit its highest against the yen since 2008. That's more to do with the yen than the euro, though, isn't it? Absolutely. I think whichever uh, or many currency pairs, when you're looking at uh, the yen, uh, we are at record extremes. We've seen that obviously uh, demonstrated most importantly and impactfully uh, by the move in terms of uh, the dollar against the yen. But we are also seeing that reflected uh, against the euro. We're also seeing even sterling uh, also uh, uh, holding up relatively well. So it is very much a story of uh, yen weakness. We've obviously seen the Japanese trying to stem its slide by making some continued references to the threat of intervention, not just unilaterally, but potentially uh, on a slightly more coordinated fashion. But it still seems to be the case that uh, with uh, Bank of Japan monetary policy still in a very different space to every other jurisdiction, then we are going to continue to see the yen under pressure. And it's quite interesting that when you're looking at speculative positioning uh, in terms of the yen, um, in terms of uh, real money investors, they are at extremes that we haven't seen since 2007. So that just underlines the pace or the momentum that's really built behind this uh, broader yen weakness, not just against the euro. Now, we touched upon PMI data, and it looks quite positive both for both the UK and the eurozone, though the bloc's manufacturing sector still seems to be in the doldrums, doesn't it? Well, yes, you're right that if you if you actually look at the overall measures, so the composite measures, those look uh, reasonably supportive. 
But of course, that masked the differential between manufacturing and services. So service sentiment has improved and improved uh, quite measurably in both the UK and across the Eurozone, both in France and Germany. Uh, and yet the contrast is, of course, the manufacturing sector. And that is the particular concern from the Eurozone side of the equation, because, of course, the reliance on the uh, Eurozone manufacturing base to try and drive economic growth. But the context of an improved service sector does suggest that there is still resilience in the terms of the global macro story, or at least in terms of the uh, macro dynamics. And I think that still leaves us cautiously optimistic that the second half of the year will probably be better than the first. And I think ultimately that sets us up for a slightly stronger 2025 on the presumption that we are going to see some cautious but uh, notable uh, easing in monetary policy, i.e. cuts in rates in the second half of this year. Jeremy Stretch from CIBC, as always, many thanks for your thoughts. And that's Market Insight. Don't forget you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.